Welcome to Game Guys, I'm your host Bricks, and today we're going to be going over the basic roles and positions in a Hell Let Loose infantry squad. So turn your textbooks to chapter 1, and let's get started with this Hell Let Loose 101 on infantry squad basics. Before we get started, I'd like to give a special shout out to our friends at Team Asylum Gaming. You can check them out at discord.gg slash teamasylum. So in our 101 videos, we're going to be sharing everything from the basics of the basic all the way to the pro tips they are going to elevate your gameplay to the next level. Just like anything you learn though, you got to have a strong foundation. So we're kicking this 101 series off with the infantry squad basics right now. So first things first, what is the role of the infantry squad in Hell Let Loose? Infantry squads in Hell Let Loose make up the vast majority of your team's fighting force. The primary function of the infantry squad is to close with the enemy and cripple their ability to attack or defend any points on the map. Infantry squads max out at six members, including the officer or squad leader, and these squads can vary drastically depending on the different roles that are selected in each squad and how the squad leader decides to use those assets. Within the infantry squad, they take their orders from the officer or squad leader, who subsequently takes his orders from the commander in order to get the team to the objectives that they're trying to meet. But always remember, communication is key, so always try to encourage your team to talk in voice or text chat at least. Basic number two, Infantry Squad Specialty Designations. We'll go more in depth on this later, but infantry squads can be comprised of a lot of different roles made up of a lot of different combinations to achieve specific goals for the team. However, whether you're the squad leader or the squad member, the first thing you need to look at is whether or not the squad is a defensive squad, offensive, logistics, artillery, or some type of other combination. Squad leaders have the ability to set a special designator at the deploy menu, but if it's not there, just ask your squad whenever you get in, what are we doing? Are we defending? Are we pushing? What's going on? Once that information is found out, it should give you insight into what kind of role to pick within the squad. However, if you're unsure, just ask the squad leader what they need. For example, if you're a defensive squad, you're probably going to need a support guy for resources, you're going to need an engineer to put down nodes and defenses, and probably an MG to spray down some hate on the enemy as they try to come up on you. Likewise, if you're a primarily offensive squad, that may be a sign to drop the MG and maybe hop on the assault class so you can have a satchel charge or a combination of 9 to 10 smoke and frag grenades to help on pushes. There's a lot of different options and variations to make your squad best suited for the objective you currently have, but always remember that one of your top priorities as a squad is to help place offensive and defensive spawn points like garrisons and OPs to keep your team in the fight. The final basic that we're going to cover in this video is the infantry squad role descriptions. Please keep in mind though, this is our 101 basics video. For a more detailed guide of all of the roles that we're going to be talking about, please check out some of our other videos where we go in depth into each specific role in an infantry squad. So let's start at the top and work our way down. The first role in an infantry squad is the officer, commonly known as the squad leader. In this role, you will be in combat, but your main priority is to make sure that you're giving outpost or spawn points to your squad and providing garrisons for the rest of the team to spawn on. You're also the leader of the pack. Your squad is counting on you to take orders from the commander and take other information that you receive from your map and relay that to your squad and make the best possible tactical decisions that you can. You do need to have a basic knowledge of the game to play the squad leader role, but oftentimes you'll have someone in your squad who's just tired of playing the squad leader role, but is more than willing to give you advice on how to run the squad. Again, I cannot stress enough though, you need to have a basic to at least intermediate knowledge of the game to run this role properly. The next position in the infantry squad is the rifleman. The rifleman role is much like it sounds. You have a pretty basic loadout, but you can drop an ammo box for your friendlies. You can have up to six riflemen in one squad. However, any squad should really have no more than maybe one or two. Last thing I'll say about this role is if you do have an ammo box, drop it. Every time you're near friendlies, drop your ammo box, please. Next up, we have the assault class. With update eight, assault is the only class in the game that actually has four different loadout options. Of course, you do have to level up the role to get those different loadouts. This class is exceptionally useful for pushing points while using their smokes and frags to get in. The second to last loadout for this class actually has a combination of nine or 10 smoke and frag grenades, depending on which side you're on. This class is less useful on defense, but you do get some pretty decent weapons in the later tiers. So if you need the additional fire rate, by all means, use it, whatever's needed. Speaking of a higher fire rate, Next up is the Automatic Rifleman. 
This is a pretty balanced class for offense and defense, as it does come with smoke and frag grenades, and a weapon with higher rate of fire than the typical infantry soldier. This is especially useful in the German team, where the slow cycle rate of the Car 98 may not be the best option. Next up, we have the Medic. Everyone blame the healer. The Medic role, like some others, is pretty balanced on offense and defense, but this role really shines when they're picking up friendlies within strong points on offense or defense, because that could be the difference in the cap or the loss. Medics are also really useful if you have a really super secret squirrel ninja squad who likes to flank so you can keep your team up and keep those OPs hot. The support role, the good old supply guy. Again, a pretty balanced role with decent weapons, and in higher tier with the ammo carrier loadout, you are the only role on the team that can drop explosive ammo. So keep those supplies going for garrisons and nodes, and don't be afraid to try out this role. Machine Gunner. Need I say more? The Machine Gunner has the highest rate of fire in the squad, but for true accuracy, needs to be able to mount his weapon. That being said, this is a primarily defensive role in my opinion. However, this role can be used offensively to keep the enemy suppressed while you're trying to move forward. Anti-Tank. The Lone Wolf. This role again is balanced with decent weapons, and depending on your loadout, anti-tank mines. Because most armor in the game is weak in the rear where their engines are, I tend to see this role flanking in small numbers quietly to get behind the enemy and drop a sneaky mine or take out those tanks before they can get to your friendlies. And last but not least, the Engineer. If you play this role, you're going to dream of nodes. The Engineer role can be offensive whenever trying to place nodes as far forward in friendly territory as possible. However, I see this role as primarily defensive because of their anti-personnel mines and the fact that it takes time and resources to set up nodes and defenses around a point. So that's all for our Hell at Loose 101 Infantry Squad Basics. If you like this content, please show us by giving us a like and subscribe and telling us in the comments what you would like to see next. So remember to stay tuned for more advanced tips, and until next time, as always, see you in game.